welcome to another edition of the Backyard Professor Chess videos where I try to share what I consider to be really good chess instruction. It's a nice cool fall morning and my last video I showed you where Black just got massacred because he played too passively. I'm going to show you an Evans Gambit game again out of Fred Reinfeld's The Complete Chess Course where I show you how black can play improved chess. There are, it's true as a general theory, white opens first, but so white has the advantage, but if he doesn't play correctly, if he plays passively, or if your opponent of the white pieces plays incorrectly, blunders a piece or whatever, then white has every option of losing too. At the, at the beginning, if white doesn't play vigorously, then he can fall behind like this game illustrates very, very beautifully. So here we have the potential for a Rui Lopez or a Guacamole Piano. I like calling it Guacamole Piano because Gioco Piano is too difficult for me to pronounce. <laughs> Yeah. And now pawn, queen, four. Now, this, as it turns out, turns out to be the Evans Gambit, which is a very interesting gambit, and white immediately takes the pawn, so black has sacrificed a pawn. I can pull this over here and put my chess pieces over there. Easy enough. So here we see, by black taking the pawn with the bishop, he comes up with a pawn. Now, white puts the challenge to the bishop, and the bishop comes out. Notice how white is establishing his strong center here. Now, this is always important because... Black doesn't want to play passively if you can help it. Otherwise, if you do, white is going to crush you in the center. Notice how black is going to maintain a presence in the center, which should give him greater flexibility, right? This is the theory. If white takes, then black takes, and he still has that black pawn in the center. That's a very important, very important idea. Now, Bishop King Knight 5 putting the question to the Queen, of course, threatening the Queen. This is easy to parry. He does so with the pawn and not the knight. So rather than have that kind of a problem, he develops his Queen and he's going to come and get the King. So his Bishop is basically immune from attack. It's not going to be that big of a problem. So, the king knight comes to king two to prevent the checkmate. However, the bishop does come to bishop seven check. Now, this is interesting because of the nature of black's ability to have brought out a strong center. And because of the way his knights are placed and because of the way his bishop's here, white wastes a move forcing the king to move. And this is kind of interesting because black has not played passively. White's wasting his time here. Although black is going to have to defend with some serious care, but of course. And now the bishop comes up here to rook five. And when you see this, you say, it looks to me like white is so much more aggressively placed. This is true, but black plays this correctly. And it's very interesting how he does so. He's threatening, of course, Queen, Bishop, 7, checkmate. And the question is, can Black do anything to prevent that next move as checkmate? Yes, he really can. It's really not this big of a problem if he plays it right. And the way he does this is knight, knight 3. Blocking the bishop, so now the queen can't come to here. The king simply, simply takes the queen. So that's how to parry it. You notice what he does 
is he brings out more pieces as the means to get rid of White's silly play. Right? Now, interestingly enough, Bishop comes back to King 3, and the Queen will come up here to King 2. Now, Black is systematically beginning to develop all of his forces, and it is beginning to give him a strong game because White is more interested in one and two piece attacks and black is going to protect himself through development and this is what is so important bishop comes back here to knight three to come across the center you notice black has maintained the pressure in the center but he's also maintained his presence in the center this is what has given black his good defense that's very interesting isn't it Queen Knight comes up to Queen 2. White is also rapidly putting his entire army into this game, but of course, and now Bishop King 3. Notice the way Black, who at one moment ago was almost in trouble with a checkmate, notice how now, because he has brought more and more pieces, that he's actually taking the initiative away from White. This is a really good illustration of how to do that. The way to defend yourself the best, if possible, is through development. Now, black is starting to carry out some threats. So now white has to turn around and start reacting to what black's playing. This is great chess. I really like how he does this. He, of course pushes the pawn to queen five and you say see black is a complete amateur because now he puts himself in the middle of a pawn fork hold on not so fast this is a great example here when you find yourself in this kind of a position the way to avoid losing a piece is to counter attack your opponent you have to find the threats. You have to find the moves that you can make that virtually force your opponent to react to what it is you're doing. So this is not an amateur mistake, even though I gotta confess that pawn fork is a beauty, but it doesn't pay. Watch what he does. Knight to rook four. He's gotten rid of one of his pieces off of this pawn fork and he's making a forcing move against the queen. If white's half intelligent he now has to move his queen, right? That's what I mean by a forcing move. Now black is counter-attacking and white must respond. And of course white does. Queen to knight four. Now the bishop can come to queen to, it remains developed. Notice how he didn't take his bishop all the way back. This is important because he maintains a movement of the bishop, he maintains his diagonals, and he gives the rooks a chance to connect. Even though black can't castle, that's okay, he gives his rooks a chance to come into this game because he kept his bishop off of the back rank. Just another one of those small little clues that's really, really important to keep, to keep teaching, to keep showing us so that we can see how the masters play chess and we can imitate them. This is one of our keys to our success, I believe. And now, yeah, he's got the queen side Notice the difference between the, the weaknesses of White's queenside pawn structure and Black's queenside pawn structure is virtually intact. This is nice. Black has targets, but watch what he does here. The queenside, if he focuses on the queenside, he can do something really powerful there, but watch what he does. What a great outpost for a knight, right? You always want to look for the advanced outpost that is supported 
and that knight's not going anywhere. He hits the bishop over here. He's coming down into here with a potential check. He's got the queen that can come into here and the, the bishop that can come into here. He's got the bishop here that could force an exchange. Isn't it fascinating that a few moves ago, Black was almost being threatened with checkmate, and now he's turning it around, and it looks like he's preparing for one terrific kingside attack. Isn't that fun? It's through development that he does this. This is what I wanted to show you. Well, the bishop takes the knight. You can't leave a strong knight like that. Not, that's just, that's correct. And, of course, the pawn covering the knight, the pawn takes the bishop. But now we have an advanced pawn. Yes, it's a doubled pawn, but it's an advanced pawn, and it could very well be used to help break up the kingside cover. Right? Knight comes up to rook four. He's got two pieces on the side like this. Black was threatening to win a piece by pawn to knight three. By pushing the pawn, he was he had the he had the chance to win a piece. He says, "Notice how bit by bit Black is switching from defending to attacking, and this is critical because he's developed well. He can see the opportunities to begin attacking the white pieces, but only because he hasn't left his rook, his knight, his bishop, and his queen here." He's got these guys out here moving around and playing the game. Right? Development is, is critical here. Now, queen comes straight up the middle. What a great centralizing move by the queen. If and when you can ever be able to centralize and strengthen your center, now look who's got the center. And, of course, it follows. And it's the logic of the way chess is set up, seriously. If you have great central control and power, you have the better mobility. So black is becoming more and more mobile, which gives him more opportunities to take the initiative. He can now begin playing more aggressive chess. That's what the initiative is, right? This is a further improvement of black's development. Now, white tries really hard to give black a swindle. <laughs> he says, and I'm not going to go through all of the details of this, but Bishop Knight 6, he is trying very seriously hard to get him to take the bishop so that he can bring his knight up and do a fork on the king, the rook, and the queen. And when you see something like this, you don't have to fall for it. Because white can see black has gradually begun to take control of this game, right? So he's going to try to give him a swindle, and it's just not going to work. Because now what occurs is black has a powerful zap move, so to speak. Bishop takes pawn check. A classical, powerful beginning of a kingside attack through sacrificing the bishop. And the king takes the bishop. And now queen comes to queen five check. Notice how the queen was back here. She's moved up into the center and now she's beginning to dominate the entire board with excellent threats across the area. This is great chess. This is really fun to see. King comes over to king two. Now he says bishop comes up here to knight five check. You notice all of this time, White's bishop is still threatened. Of course, he still wants to be able to carry out that swindle. He can't fork the queen now, but he can fork the knight or the rook and the king. But you notice Black's not falling for it. Rather, Black is beginning to coordinate his pieces together, crisscrossing, so that they can get the king. Sometimes position is more important for us to focus on than the gain of material. Right? That makes sense. 
Knight at rook four comes back down to bishop three, putting the threat to the queen, blocking the check. Right? Now, the pawn gets the bishop. You notice how he played that so well? He eventually ended up getting the bishop for free because of his extra forcing moves with his queen and his bishop here, sacrificing to get the king out in the open and then come after him, he still ended up getting the piece anyway. That's really kind of fun, isn't it? The white queen takes the knight over here, which virtually wasn't doing anything and had very little to do with the game anyway, but he's got to get a piece, and now he says, rook takes the pawn. You see, piece by piece, huh? Move by move, black is beginning to win this game. And he's got another whole rook here he can slide over really fast. So this is very important. So rook goes to king knight one to protect that pawn. And pawn comes up to king bishop four. You notice that the so-called weaknesses, the weakness of the doubled pawn is not a weakness at all. Those pawns are coming all the way out. They are completely overpowering and supporting and protecting black and attacking white as doubled pawns. That's very interesting illustration, isn't it? Queen takes the bishop pawn. He comes down to here. So now you got to start watching it because isn't it interesting how it's almost like white is the one now counterattacking as opposed to black, isn't it? Isn't that fun? But watch. Queen comes to king six. Check. The attack is on. Because of his doubled pawns, he has all the power here. King pops back to bishop one. Pawn takes the pawn. Look at that power. Wow, he's got the knight threatened here with the queen. He's got the knight threatened here with the pawn. He's going to lose a knight somewhere. Now, it's because of his development and his superior mobility. You notice that. You remember, when you control the center, you have better mobility. I mean, look at how mobile Black has been with so many of his pieces and his pawns because he maintained a presence in the center. This is a great lesson to know, right? Queen takes queen pawn check. And you say, well, white's not doing so bad. Now, white's, white's not going to be able to make it. Knight takes the pawn. And queen goes to queen six check and it's here the white resign because he says if king comes to king one then rook comes to king one and that that's just one of the many variations that he shows he says, this is a masterfully example of how the defender brings out his pieces, he consolidates his position, and he gradually switches to counterattack. As, as Jeremy Silman says, he says, you have to find targets to, to hit in your opponent's position. That's the idea of counterattacking. You don't always have to let your opponent make the threats. You find threats, and, and we saw how Black did this. Even Black's final attack is a tribute to his earlier maneuvering of the pieces, for his careful early play is what made it possible for him to bring out each and every single piece in his army in a threatening counterattack. So see, having the Black pieces is not necessarily a bad thing. It's all up to us on how we play it. So I hope this I hope this chess exercise shows you that as you play black, the difference between the passivity of black in the last video and the way black contained, used the center 
as a takeoff for his mobility and counterattack, this is how you want to play chess. So, thanks for watching my chess videos, and happy checkmating, happy chessercising, and I will see you in the next video.